This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about the at context manager decorator and how we can use it efficiently in Python. Now, just a week ago, I created a video on context managers. So if you don't know what a context manager is, please watch that video first because I'm not really going to be explaining how context managers work in this video. I'm just going to be showing you the convenience of using the decorator. Now to get started, I'm going to import a few things such as the time module. Then from context lib, we're going to import the context manager decorator. And finally, from typing, I'm going to import the generator type, the IO type and the any type. And you do not need this unless you enjoy the benefits of type safety in Python. But let's get started by creating our very first context manager using the at context manager decorator. So here we're going to type in at context manager. And what we're going to do here is create a simple file manager. And all it's going to do is handle opening and closing files. So first we're going to take a path of type string and the mode, which will be of type string. And then what this is going to return is a generator. And what it's going to yield is the IO type. We can practically send anything we want inside there. That doesn't really matter. And it's going to return nothing because we're just working with a file. We're opening it and closing it. Now, once again, this is a type annotation. You're not required to use this to actually make the function work. If you don't understand what this is, you can safely ignore it until you actually start learning about types in Python or type annotations in Python. And I have a full course on this on my website. So feel free to check that out. Otherwise, let's continue with this context manager. Now, the first thing we want to do inside here is open the file. So this file, which will be of type IO, is going to equal open the path in the following mode. Now, what we can do inside here is print opening file. So practically, this part is the same as the enter dunder method. Everything we insert here is treated as the enter bit of the dunder method that we use when we are creating a class that can work as a context manager. And what we want to do is try to yield the file. This is what we want to try to open. Now, in case there's an exception, of course, you can enter your accept block and handle that accordingly. But if you don't care about that and you want to handle the exception outside, just leave that blank. You can just directly insert the finally block, which will be treated as the on exit dunder method. And here we can print closing file. I might add an ellipsis here for dramatic effect. And obviously we want to try to close the file here. Although it might even be more smart to check if there is a file before we try to close it. Otherwise we will run into another exception because if we never manage to open this, we're definitely not going to be able to close it. What we can do next is actually try to use this. So what we're going to do is type in with file manager. And here we can type in something such as example.txt. Now this doesn't exist yet, so I'm just going to use this in write mode. And of course we want to type in as F because F is going to refer to the file that we are yielding. And here we can type in f.write hello Bob. And it's going to be as simple as that to use this context manager. Now, when we run this, we're going to see that we're able to open the file and that we're able to close the file. So next let's try to read from this file by typing in R and then printing f.read. And what we should notice is that inside the file, we have hello, Bob. Now, as always, if we have any exceptions, such as raise exception, and we can do, I don't know, Bob did it again. You'll notice that we will run into that exception, but that the file will also be handled accordingly, as we specified in our finally block. So you still have the chance to clean up that file appropriately before concluding this operation, which can be quite important, especially if you want to avoid memory leaks. You don't want to just have a bunch of files open that you never closed because that's really bad. And as I mentioned earlier, you can add your exceptions here. If you want, you can type in accept exception as E. We're just going to do the generic thing and print E so that the next time we run this, we're not going to run into an error because we handled it inside the context manager. As you can see, Bob did it again. Damn you, Bob. So that was just one simple example on how to use this context manager decorator. But of course, it would be nice if we had some more practice. So let's use another example or let's create another example. 
And for this example, I'm going to create a timer. And this is one of my favorite ways to use this decorator because I found it to be quite clean and concise. So once again, we're going to use the add context manager decorator. And inside here, we're going to type in timer. And that's going to return to us a generator that yields nothing, accepts anything, and that returns nothing. Then we're going to type in start time, which is going to be of type float. And that's going to equal time dot performance counter. So we can get that start time before we try running the function. Now here we can try to yield, which is what happens in between enter and exit. So we're just telling the context manager that we can start you. And finally, what we want to do is grab the end time, which will be the float of time dot performance counter. And here we can print the F string of time. And here we will enter end time minus start time and use some F string magic with 0.4F, which means this is going to round it to four decimal places. And at the end, I'm going to add an S to show that this is in seconds. Now with this simple context manager, we can do the following. We can type in with timer, which is really cool. And here we're going to type in text of type string is going to equal an empty string and for I in range 100,000, we're going to type in text plus equals the string of I. So we're performing a very heavy operation here. We're creating a bunch of new strings and appending a new number to it each and every single time. But with this simple decorator, we can now time how long this actually took. So if we run this script now, you'll notice that it will give us back the time it took to run this code. And this is something I really enjoy doing because it's just so simple. It's so simple to create a simple context manager without having to create a whole new class. And if you want, you can even import, let's say date and time, or actually from date time, we're going to import date and time. And here we're going to do something such as now, which will be of type date and time, and that's going to equal date time dot now. And with that, we can print started at and insert that time. We can do now and format it via percent %h, percent %m, and percent %s. And I'm actually having a really hard time remembering if this is going to print the month or the minute. So we're just going to run that real quick. And it looks like it printed the minute. So we are good there. And of course, with that, I might want to grab the time once again. And maybe it's just easier to put this inside here. So I'll do that. Take this away and include this at the end. So we can type in ended at this time. So now if we were to change this to maybe 500,000, I actually don't know if that will complete, so we'll do 200,000 and run this. You'll see that it's going to start at that time and then it's going to end at this time. So we actually have some added information inside our context manager plus the total time it actually took to run this functionality or this block of code. So there's a lot you can do with this decorator, but at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong answer to whether you should use a class or the decorator to create this functionality. The rule of thumb is to use whatever you find more readable. For some small functionality such as this one, I would probably go with the decorator, but if you have more function to worry about and you just want to encapsulate the proper functionality with other code, definitely go with a class. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this decorator. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.